you find yourself lost in Irving Land. <laughs> Just waiting for lunch. Lunch? Now stop that, dear. I thought you were with Dr. Smith. Mom, I can't sleep in the daytime like he does. Small correction, Will. Smith is most capable of sleeping any time there's something else he's supposed to be doing. Day or night has nothing to do with it. Anyway, you know Dr. Smith. Hey, what are we having for lunch? I'm scared. Who's that? I don't know. There's nothing in the sky. Maybe it was an asteroid or a spaceship. There's nothing in the sky, so it was probably a spaceship or asteroid. Think about that, Maureen. While you're doing that, let's go find Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith. Um, yes, madam. Two hours ago, I told you that Don and the girls were going out collecting plant and mineral specimens. Isn't that right? Uh, yes. And I also asked if you would please send the robot out to help them carry back anything that was too heavy. Uh, yes. Yes, of course. Then what is he doing there? I have received no orders. Tattletale. No, he's answering her question. But of course, it's all his fault Smith is in trouble. He's afraid of Major West, but he's terrified of Maureen. It's not hard to sort out why. She controls the food. And as we've noted before, some creatures eat to live. Zachary Smith lives to eat. He's off to take the robot to the girls, and Will says he'll go along. By this point, we all know why. It's not because he's all that fond of Smith. It's because somebody has to make sure he finishes the job once in a while. All right, did you find any plants? Not a one. I don't think Penny's finding any either. We split up so we could cover as much area as possible. What was it? An eclipse? No, it was much too close for an eclipse. I think we'd better get back to the spaceship. But what about Penny? We'll find her on the way back. No, you won't. The daffodil, just like on Earth. It isn't real. It's made of paper. Which means somebody fabricated it and put it there. Take a moment to ask yourself why. Ah! Who are you? I wasn't going to pick it. You want me to go away? Pay attention to his gestures, Penny. Our girl isn't too perceptive today. Yes, I think I will thank you. No! Let go! Let go of me! You want me to, you want me to go that way? No, I didn't do anything and I'll just go back the way I He told you to go the other way and you even understood what he meant. It's obvious he didn't put the net there and was trying to keep her from stumbling into it. Who did put it there and what do they want? Stop struggling in there, you silly little girl. Come away. You'll only hurt yourself. Then you'll be spoiled as an exhibit. Exhibit? Of course, Earth Girl. You're mine now. I trapped you for my zoo. Before anybody gets their nose out of joint about the cheesy effects, he'll take that thing off and reveal that he's your basic humanoid. He built it himself to scare critters like Penny. That's right, we're heading into a Penny episode. I'm fine with that, and if you're a fan of Lost in Irving Land, you know why. Penny! Penny! Judy, help! Silence. Your name is Penny. Well then, Penny, close your eyes. No, I won't. I'm not going to hurt you. Not until you tell me who you are and, and what you mean by zoo. Well, not this silly little net that you're in. At the moment, you're outside my zoo. Um, duh. And by the way, I have a feeling there may be a law somewhere about keeping rational, sentient creatures as animal exhibits. Penny keeps refusing to do what he says until he threatens to kill Judy and Don. Big, tough guy. I want to see him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Don. I have a feeling that fight would be shorter than Mike Tyson and Michael Spinks in 1987. I promise this won't hurt a bit. You're going to love the quarters that I've arranged for you. Now, are you ready? Hmm? Dude, you're ripping her away from everything and basically enslaving her. Why should she love anything about that? But this guy is so far up his own guzics, he can watch Food Digest. There. Isn't that better? 
No. Oh, I'm sorry. You see, I'm really quite harmless. <laughs> <laughs> I only use this silly thing when I trap Homo sapiens. Oh, yes, he says he's captured other Earth humans. But why Earth? Well, I used to exhibit Martians, but no one seems to believe in them much anymore. And with good reason. Right up until July of 1965, we suspected there might be life, even sentient life, on Mars. Then Mariner 4 sent back pictures of the planet and revealed that it's a planet of barren mountains, impact craters, and rocks. Many, many rocks. No Martians. Which means if he was exhibiting Martians, either he was exhibiting rocks or he invented some kind of critters. Which means he's a fake. Among the other humans he has on display are a medieval knight in full armor, which he apparently never takes off, and Whistler's mother. Oh, I think I've seen her before someplace. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, not now, my dear, later. I'm afraid Mrs. Whistler is rather hard of hearing. If she didn't notice Penny standing there, she must be hard of seeing, too. My guess is she's been drugged or is otherwise being mind-controlled. His other human is Ago, the boy she encountered on the planet. He's from Earth's Stone Age. Basically, he's a caveman in training. I am the great Harnam B, showman of the cosmos, sole proprietor of the one and only traveling zoo in all the heavens. I'm sorry, Mr. Farnham, but I'm not very pleased to meet you. Oh. I don't know what he expected since he stole her against her will. If he thinks he's going to win her over by sheer force of nice stuff, he should have learned a little more about her before he kidnapped her. Your room. Okay, Mr. Great Farnham B., today's vocabulary lesson involves the connotative differences between the word room and the word cell. He pushes some buttons on his box and stuff starts appearing. You'll be safe here. <laughs> no more struggling for survival. <laughs> Why, here you can have anything you want. Whatever. <laughs> Not true. She wants to leave. This was way back in grandmother's time. Oh. I'm gonna guess the Beatles. Oh, I'm sorry. A few minor adjustments may be necessary. <laughs> And if it was the Beatles, that right there should be a felony. Um, Mr. Farnham? What? How did you do all this? While she engages Farnham in conversation, our boy is slipping in and doing something with the control box. There's only one thing, my dear. You must never, ever try to deceive me. Like you! You are great for the correct oh. you, you sing! Give me that! can't even steal properly without making a mess of it. Oh. What have you been doing with my, my control box? Uh, uh, get out of here! Get back to your cage! Work on your poker face, Penny. She begs Farnham not to hurt the boy. Oh, oh don't worry, my dear. I would never hurt him. But don't you tell him that. <laughs> Blasted prehistoric nuisance. Do you know that he's my most valuable exhibit? You mean he's from Earth, too? Of course. The only Stone Age cave boy in captivity. Again, that's called slavery. But there's no time to philosophize about it right now. He's getting a signal. He's got another one. Where are we? I don't know. Back! Both of you, back! Now look here, miss. Do as I say, get back! Sir Shiny's name is Mort, and Farnham controls him. He seems to have no will of his own. And in a few seconds, Don has no laser pistol of his own. Oh, stop struggling, you silly fool. It won't do you any good. Mort here is one of my finest exhibits. The original Sir Mordred, who killed your King Arthur. So he's a myth, then. More precisely, spoiler, he's a robot. So is Mrs. Whistler. Ago and now Penny are the only real exhibits he has. Dear, I hope I'm not going to have trouble with that one. But you'll help me, won't you, my dear, to keep him calm? Hmm? The trouble with the Homo sapiens male, I understand, is that they all used to be boys. What's wrong with boys? Weren't you one once? Well, of course not. Where I come from, we've done away with that growing up nonsense. 
That's a nice idea, but you eliminated the wrong end of the process. Being born 40 years old only leads to you. But if it's true that you've cut all kinds of humans, then you must have had lots of experience. Are you calling me a fraud, Penny? She didn't say that. You did. He says, I've caught thousands of humans, and the only one that's ever given me trouble is Argo. And you know why? Because he's a boy. So there. Hm. That's exactly what your typical Earth boy would say, dude. So there. Hm. I don't see anybody, Dr. Smith. Are you sure you said his direction finder's right? Of course I did. He's simply not cooperating today, and that is what it is. In the earliest days, Smith was a robotics expert who could handle all the intricate workings of the robot. Since then, he's developed into a blustering, bumbling idiot who wouldn't know a drinkalator from a flube. Now then, you tin-plated tin tabulation, where is the major? And Judy? And Penny? Answer me at once, you hear. Now, the zero's not the zero. No. Smith, I think he's trying to make alarm signals. Alarm alarm signals, signals, my foot. I see nothing to be alarmed about. Case in point. I guess we're not going to discuss the fact that he can't talk now that Smith fixed him. William, look. We've seen footage of those fish way down in the deep ocean that have a worm-like thingy sticking off their head to attract prey. Yeah, Smith is the other fish. <laughs> Dr. Smith. No, the intelligent looking one. Mort appears and Smith has an idea. Let Mort and the robot joust and if the robot wins, they go free. Farnham says it's a deal. You know, it seems to me that if Mort is allowed to have that gigantic axe, the robot should be allowed to use his zappers. Oops. Oh, Will, what are we going to do? I'm sure I'd just love to spend forever in a girl's room. That's not important. The trouble is Mr. Farnham's so smart. It's obvious he can travel any place, through time, space, anything. Well, then why didn't he bring back a real knight from the Middle Ages? Who cares? Oh, Will, don't you realize the spot we're in? We saw in the first season that Will knows how to play a guitar. Unfortunately, Farnham B. doesn't, which is why he created the guitar sound that goes up when you play down and vice versa. Will tried for years to explain it to him, but finally gave up and requested an electric kazoo. Penny never forgave him. Now, you just stop that! You asked for less, didn't you? I gave them to you. What are you throwing them about for? All right, but give me my laser gun. Give me a radio! Major! I don't understand why you're carrying on like this. I give you almost everything. It's that almost part that's giving him trouble, my man. You're giving him everything except the freedom to choose his own destiny. If you really understood humans, you'd know that without that, nothing else matters. But he doesn't care. It's time to take his act on the road. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Farnham, please. Yes, yes, my dear. What is it? I'm in a terrible hurry. Well, I just thought of something else I'd like. What? Um, could I please have a strawberry? Strawberry? No. Well, you said I could have anything I wanted. I did? Oh, yes, so I did. Well, I think I have time to manage a little thing like a strawberry. When he opens the door, Will goes to work. Close your eyes. Open your mouth. Now, there's a real live strawberry. There. How's that? Mm, it's delicious. Oh, good. Here, have another. Ugh, it's yellow. Oh, yes, of course. Isn't it lovely? supposed to be red. It doesn't matter if they're sky blue pink as long as she holds his attention for a few more seconds. What did you do? It's an old trick. There's a woman over there. She looked awfully nice and she's pretty old, so I guess she's been here a long time. 
Well, maybe she can tell us how to get out. Yeah, come on. No such luck, especially when they try to get her attention and her arm comes off. Everything in here is fake. Well, except Ogle. Penny says, let's go find him and I'll bet he can show us how to get out. Farnham B is making sure all his exhibits are ready for blast off. Oh, please, I'm in a hurry. What is the matter with you? Didn't he arrange your natural habitat properly? Yes, indeed, my natural habitat. This is what I'm accustomed to. This is what I deserve. Champagne, fresh caviar. Hey, Farnham, if you really want to exhibit him in his natural state, take all that stuff out, put a couple of nice big mice in there, and watch him run around screaming. I bet the rubes will pay big bucks to see that. Howsomever, my dear Mr. Farnham, there is one rather important thing that I remember that seems to be missing. <laughs> Of course, money to stuff his pockets with. What he thinks he'll get to buy with it, your guess is as good as mine. But for Smith, the idea is to have it, not necessarily to do anything with it. He's delighted with the situation, which has Farnham thoroughly baffled. You tried to shoo me away from the daffodil, remember? W weren't you trying to save me from being caught? <laughs> Party. I was so jealous that he got to do that and I didn't. Don't you understand? Home. Wouldn't you like to go back where you came from? Back to your jungle? <laughs> I think that's a pretty solid no. She says, well then, you could come with us. Maybe he's afraid there are too many of us. Could you get one of us out? Just one? it's easier to get you out because you're smaller. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. He couldn't have a crush on Penny. I mean, who does that? Then you could bring help and get the rest of us out. <laughs> Penny will go back to the cage and try to keep Farnham from getting suspicious. Speaking of whom, Dr. Smith has noticed that his wristwatch is missing. Oh. Tell me, when Mort was in here arranging things, did Argo come in too? The little hairy creature? Uh, yes, yes he did, for a moment. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, he stole it and you didn't even notice. Oh, I've taught him well. He's taught him to cheat, steal, be distrusting. He's taught him almost everything. Do you know that I have never caught a real human being in my whole life? Pity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except Argo, that is. But if you knew what a nuisance it's been trying to keep him primitive like that. Do you know that I'm even afraid to speak in front of him for fear that he'll start talking and ruin the only good exhibit that I've got? Almost everything except how to communicate. I will always wonder what kind of arrogance prompts a sentient being to think they have the right to control other sentient beings, especially when it's all built on lies. While they're forging a partnership to serve mutual selfishness, one of his alarms goes off. Oh dear. What was that? No, not that. No, it's the wrong. Ah, there we are. What is that? Escape! Is that it? Is that where we get out? Uh -huh. The only problem is, each of those doors leads to a different time period. Which one is ours? Uh -huh. You mean that goes to where you live? Back to your jungle? Uh -huh. Argo, show me mine. How do I get back to the spaceship? Argo, you young devil. Keep away from those stalls. Hurry. Ah. Give me that boy. Ah, you little brat. Ah. I think he was trying to toss Will through the green one, but nothing went according to anybody's plan. And it gets worse. Where is it? Where are my other control boxes? I don't know. Well, how are we going to escape from... Escape? Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, I left them there. I left them in Dr. Smith's room. He can't get them back. They're stuck here in Ago's cave. Back on Farnham's ship, Smith is trying to figure out how to work all those control boxes when Ago appears and tells him that Farnham is gone for good. Naturally, Smith gets an idea. Ago. Do you know how these control boxes work? 
how the whole spaceship works. He'll start using all his manipulative skills to convince Agu that they're a team now and they'll make a fortune running this zoo without Varnum. That wicked man. I'm sure he mistreated you and was very cruel to you. You poor dear boy. Never even gave you proper clothes, did he? Proper for whom? Who decided? But Agu is naive enough to fall for it. How did you get out there? Hurry, open this door. Agu! What are you doing in that coat? She asks about Will, but Agu isn't sure how to answer. Right now, let's get out of here. Let us out of here. Have you forgotten those sacred words? The show must go on. The what? Unfortunately, Mr. Farnham has met with a slight accident. I am in charge here now. Except when he needs to have Agu explain a button to him. So really, Agu is in charge. Too bad he doesn't know it. And let me remind you, this zoo is already booked for a road tour. There are eager customers waiting on distant planets with money in their hot little hands. Smith, you open this door. You get out when I say so, Major, when I have collected that money. None of them should be surprised. Smith has sold them all out multiple times and they keep letting him get away with it. Another spoiler, this time will be no different. In Ago's cave, Will is helping Farnham get his bearings. Thank you, boy. You're welcome, sir. I guess now you can see that boys can be of some use. Well, I know that. That conniving Argo is the most useful thing I've ever caught. <clears throat> Blasted brat. He's ten times smarter than you are. Why haven't you ever told him that? Because he's also ten times smarter than Farnham is. Teach him a few words and he'll be running the place before you know it. As if that would be a bad thing. Will asks why he started this zoo. He says, show business is in my blood. He comes from a family of entertainers. You know, but why does that make you want to catch everything? Oh. Well, uh, boys catch things, don't they? Yes, they do. I've seen them. They catch all sorts of crawly things like uh, snakes and spiders and lizards. But we just do that to learn how they feel. And once we do, well, we let them go. You let them... Oh, you have an inferior intelligence, boy. Will isn't buying it. Caring how others feel is not an inferior trait. But maybe you feel that way because you never were a boy. You never had the chance to grow up. Now that'll be enough out of you. Will just told Farnham he screwed up in the head. Farnham agreed with him and said he doesn't want to talk about it. I offer that translation free of charge. A little poking around and Farnham realizes this is where Ago came from. Ago is also a fake. This isn't Earth. He found Ago here, yanked him away, and dressed him up to look like an earthly cave boy. Then he taught him to lie, cheat, steal, and never trust anybody. <laughs> oh, how he must be laughing now! <laughs> what? <laughs> and what he's done to me, of course! <laughs> Argo is the only one who can get us out of here. Nobody else can figure it out. Argo's the only one that can save us. <laughs> Which means they're stuck there because no way is Argo going to come to his rescue. What kind of a planet is this? I believe the life expectancy here is 45 minutes. While they're pondering that, the robot is now a carnival barker calling everyone to come see the greatest show from Earth. Have a look. Jewels. We're on a planet where they pay jewels. Let me see. Emeralds, rubies, sapphires. As always, I ask what good they are to him. But for someone like him, greed is its own reward. And greed never thinks about tomorrow when the tables may be turned. <laughs> They couldn't conquer Earth in the 1800s, so they gave up and went to the circus. That's it! That's it! Move about! Put some showmanship into it! 
Penny, don't just stand there. Move about. I've worked very hard on this production. Okay, all three of you sit down and do nothing. Be as boring as possible and make his show a huge flop. When he gets frustrated enough, he'll make a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, I know my episode is all done, but Erwin never told me where to put this thing. Now stop it at once, you hear? Play it up. Play your part well, and I promise you shall have ice cream at feeding time. Ice cream? Well, what are you grinning at? Look at you in that silly coat. Is that all you wanted? Are you happy now? I don't think Ago saw that coming. He can handle a lot, but I'm not sure he can handle losing Penny's respect. Next, she confronts the robot, but Smith redid all his internal tapes and turned him into a showbiz minion. Can't you erase your tapes and start acting like you should? Self-erasure of tapes is against a robot's prime directive. Is that all you can say? There is no business like show business, at least according to Dr. Smith. Now you stop that. At least try to erase all that from your tapes and help us. Very well. It shall be done. Even a reprogrammed robot can't resist Penny Robinson. Her innocence and purity are the strongest force in the known universe. Nothing can stand against them. Ah, uh, madam, how many? Three, I have them right here. Here we are, sir. Thank you very much. Go along, go along. Ah, ha, ha. My, my, what a pretty little girl. <laughs> Don't feed this to the animals, girlie. They'll bite. <laughs> Mort is off putting a bunch of jewels in Smith's room, and the robot seems to be elsewhere, so he's doing his own barking. See the terrifying raging major. See the pretty little girl. See. No, no. Later. Later, Argo. You'll get your chance later. Hurry, hurry. Stop it, you hear? Stop it. The show's over, Smith. He's doing the barking. Major West is doing the biting. I just wanted to help, Major. I meant no harm. I was just trying to make a bit of money for all of us, for the children's future. Same song, same rat singing it. The next question, where is Will? I'll go. You know where Will is, don't you? It's with Mr. Farnham, isn't he? And you know how to get them back. <laughs> you care about anything but that silly shiny coat? It doesn't really go with the animal skin, kid. It also clashes with your hair and your skin tone. Try a nice beige. No. You wait a minute. We all love Will. What if something awful happened to him? Do you want that? Uh, uh, you want something awful to happen to Mr. Farnham? Do you? Really? Young Ms. Angela Cartwright is going to pull out a few more stops for this scene. Mr. Farnham would never do anything to really hurt you. I know he wouldn't. He told me so. Take a moment, Ago. Then ask yourself, when has he ever hurt you? Ago, please. Maybe he is awful. D did raise you, didn't he? And even if he can't understand about boys, doesn't mean you can't. Can't try to understand about men, about fathers. That word never occurred to either of them, but that's what he's been. And that means Farnham got the short end of that deal because he wound up being a father without all the, you know, fun part. Please, Uncle, please help us. I told you nobody can resist Penny Robinson. If you've known her for more than 30 seconds, her friendship is now the most important thing in the world to you. Even more important than a stupid pink jacket. Maybe he's too big to get in here. What is it with these guys and hiding behind Will? Or did he learn that from Smith? He goes into panic mode and honestly sounds exactly like Smith. At the same time, there aren't a whole lot of places to go, and it's getting hot in here. Uh, he's going to catch us! We're trapped like rats! Now you know how it feels, Mr. Farnham. But will he remember that if he ever gets out of here? 
Help me! Help us! Anybody! Help! Take it easy, Mr. Fuller. John! First things first, let's get rid of the uninvited guest. couldn't get a clear shot at the fire breathing one so he shot a different one and that scared both of them away oh i'll go after all the horrid stupid things i taught you you still came <laughs> <laughs> and you know why? Because he's a boy. And somebody has to look after you. You're quite incapable of it on your own. Get on with it. Speak your piece. Goodbye, Penny. <laughs> How about that, huh? Give a boy an inch and he'll take a mile. Next thing you know, he'll be talking my head off. <laughs> well, we've got to find a new way to make a living. Oh, that's showbiz. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Come along, son. Bye, Mr. Farnham. Yep, he's calling him son now. They watch the ship take off and all is well. Oh, oh dear. Smith. Okay, almost all. Guess who has to be the fly in your coffee? Smith. Oh, how dare he? That curd, that ingrate, he and that worthless boy. You know what that lying palmer had the temerity to say when he threw me overboard? He said I was a fraud. He said he would not allow me in any kind of zoo. Well, that's showbiz. Today you're collecting jewels, tomorrow you're collecting dust. Indeed, a man of my body. Beware, Palmer! I'll sue you for libel! Beware! And Farnham has enough show business experience to know the other big rule for putting on a show. Leave him laughing. I'll see you next time you find yourself lost in Irvingland. If you enjoyed this episode, click the like button and let us know. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you always know what is happening. Because something is always happening here at Irving Zoo. We make sure of it. We control his computer. Until next time.